Yeah. So on Wednesday, uh, Jade and I came home in, in the car and we drove up to our house. It's on Facebook. And on the on on our front lawn was sitting two of Jade's good, very good friends, uh, Jacob uh, and Tyler, uh, both individuals I taught Sunday school and all of that kind of thing. And they were sitting on our front lawn and waiting for Jade, waiting to say hello to me. We practiced social distancing for a minute. They wanted to hug, I couldn't hug them. But the thing that, that touched, there's two things that touched my heart about that experience. I don't know if I shared this with you yet. One of them was um, how happy I was that two white boys felt comfortable to come to my house and sit on my lawn, wait for me to come home, tell me how much they love me, ask me how I was feeling, ask me was if there was anything that I needed, and then hung out with you, because they're your buds. They've been your buds for years, for years <laughs> since little people. But then the other thing I thought about, honestly, is what if you and I had gone to their lawn and sat on it waiting for them to come home not their families, because I know their families. Their families aren't like that. But what if we were sitting on the lawn, would their neighbors have called on us? You see the double standard? This is the double standard that we live in. When people ask me what is white privilege and all of that, that's exactly it. And that's not a ding at my babies because I was happy that my babies were there and I hope they come and sit on my lawn, sit on my front stoop anytime. But the double standard is I could not go and do that in, a, in, in another four or five blocks away without a nosy neighbor or a bigoted neighbor calling the police on me. So that's the double standard, and that's the thing that one uh, person of color has to always think about. How am I going to be perceived in this situation um, if I do this? Even though I know in another situation, it's no big deal. <laughs>